Our processional hymn is Immortal, Invisible. Please stand. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest on the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis, chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought. Wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick! Three seahs of fine flour, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She's in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 15, beginning with verse 1. We will read the psalm responsively by whole verse. I will begin. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue? and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. In his eyes a wild person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not transgress. Who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. The epistle reading is from Colossians, chapter 1, beginning with verse 21. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach for him, if indeed you continue to be in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, it was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, 
but now revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of his majesty, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. The word of the Lord. Thank you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. May we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Last week, as we looked at Colossians chapter 1, we looked at the features of a healthy church, a church full of faith, love, and hope. And you'll recall that there were aspirational features of the church as well, things to be hoped for, to grow in knowledge of the Lord, to walk in a manner worthy of Jesus. Today, as we look at this passage from Colossians, what we find about the people who lead the church, what are the standards for leadership? What we find as we look at this and as we examine it is the nature of ministry in the church the nature of ministry in the church. There are lessons for leaders, for aspiring leaders, and all of us who have ministry in the church. The first point about the nature of ministry in the church, Jesus serves you before you serve him. As we begin verse 21 in Colossians, it says, And you, you Colossians, who are alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. Well, that's the way they were. They were a mess before God intervened. Godless, people who worshipped a lot of gods, who didn't know the true God, they were alienated apart from God. And that was the case for all of us before we knew Christ. We were a mess, but then God did something for us. Verse 22, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. We've now been reconciled by what Christ has done for us, taking away the power of sin that used to dominate our lives and nailing it to the cross. Now we are free from the power of sin because of what Christ has done for us and have freedom to love and freedom to serve. 
But first, Jesus had to serve us before we can serve him or his people. The second point about the nature of ministry in the church, for leaders, it is the ministry with the objective of presentation. Verse 22, Paul says that he wishes to present you, the people of God, holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. The objective for leaders is the ability to present God's people before the Lord. That God's people know the gospel and the new life in Christ. And how relationships between God and each other have been transformed by Christ. And continues to be transformed relationships in the workplace and in the world. There's a cautionary note in this. To continue in the faith. Stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope, because there are factors outside of us and also listening to voices from within, from false teachers that deflect us from the hope of the gospel. And one of the roles of leaders in the church is to remind God's people of the hope they find and have in Christ. And it's for all of this that Paul became a minister. The Greek word for minister can also be translated servant, but minister is used here to indicate the service is rendering that Paul is rendering on behalf of the church. Paul is a minister who ministers who serves God and God's people to present them to God. The third point about the nature of ministry in the church, make the word of God fully known. This means focusing on the essentials of God's plan to rescue humanity. It means teaching on the necessity of the cross of Christ and, and accepting by faith what Jesus has done for us. It means learning about how to live as the people of God. Making the word of God fully known means teaching the apostolic teaching of the gospel. Making the word of God fully known means doing something that, humanly speaking, is not established by humans or essentially the responsibility of humans. It's been established according to the stewardship from God. God is the one who said, this is the message. This is what I have done. And it's the job of the leadership to transmit what God has done to God's people and to the world. The stewardship, Paul says, was given to me. It wasn't something that Paul invented because he had nothing better to do. Ministry in the church isn't Paul's idea. It's not a bishop's idea. It certainly isn't my idea. Ministry in the church and the message of the word of God is God's idea. Leadership in the church is to take care of the good deposit of the gospel, not to add to it, nor dilute it, but to present it. To make the word of God fully known because this is the nature of the teaching ministry. It's one of transmission, not invention. The fourth point about the nature of ministry in the church is to proclaim Jesus. Him we proclaim. Him we proclaim. Unusual English grammatical structure. We don't usually start sentences with objects in English, do we? We start with a subject. And then we have a verb, 
and then we have the object. But here, the translators have patterned what Paul says in the Greek to emphasize the point. It's all about Jesus, him we proclaim, rather than we proclaim him. Same meaning, different emphasis, which you can do when you've got a language like Greek, which is an inflected language. For you grammar nerds out there, you go, yeah, that's interesting. Others are like, what? doesn't matter. The point is, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom. There's a proclamation. There's warning. This is how you live. This is a life that pleases God, and if you're over here, it's time to change. It's time to repent. It's time to make amends. It's time to forgive. It's time to align yourself with the Lord. If you need to reconcile, reconcile. That's the warning part, admonition. And teaching everyone with all wisdom. Loving wisdom. Not just data dumping, not just giving people a lot more information that, that folks don't know what to do with, but teaching and warning and saying things in love, not by haranguing people, lecturing people, whacking them over the head. Jesus said, feed my sheep, not force feed my sheep. That's the word for teachers, not to ram it down people's throats, but pre present what God has to say in love. To edify, to build up. To correct through the proclamation of God's word. And there's another interesting point about the nature of ministry in the church. It's a revelation of God's purpose that was previously hidden. Verse 26, God's purpose was that the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. It's been revealed. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. The word mystery here in Greek means hidden. And that's the sense that Paul is using it here. The purpose of the Messiah, for example, was hidden. It wasn't fully known. It was partially known that the Messiah would one day come. God's people knew that. And they believed in a deliverer who would free them from oppression. But they were thinking of the Messiah in political terms. They had no idea of God's greater purpose to be the Messiah for all people, for all time, to free people from not just political oppression, but something even greater, the oppression of sin and death. We only find the, the hidden purposes of God fully revealed when Jesus comes and begins to minister and declares the purpose of the Messiah's coming to rescue humanity from our sins. But it was previously hidden, but now it's been revealed to his saints, the saints in Colossae 2,000 years ago and saints today. The great truth that was hidden is no longer hidden. And what is that great truth that has been revealed by the coming of Christ? It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The living God, the Savior who saved us is present in our lives right now. And at the same time, Jesus is in heaven, giving us the hope of being with him once life in this world ends. Our hope of glory is not fully realized. Our hope is in heaven. So that right now, we walk by faith and not by sight. Right now, we can say that Christ is in you. Yes, we know he is present in us right now. 
but full salvation belongs to the last day. But a real salvation belongs to us here and now. One scholar writes, if a believer cannot yet say that he is free from the presence of sin, he certainly should be able to say that he is free from the penalty of sin. And by God's grace, he finds daily to find Christ at work in him, saving him from the downward pull of sin. This is what it means to have Christ in you, the hope of glory, hidden from the world no longer, but proclaimed by the ministers charged with proclaiming the message of Christ in you, the hope of glory. One other point, and I'll conclude with this point about the nature of ministry in the church. Paul says it's hard work. Lead for leaders, aspiring leaders, for all who have ministry in the church, it's hard work. And we get an indication of that in verses 24 and 29. Paul writes, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. Okay, and then verse 29, for this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. Suffering and toil and struggling. That sounds hard. The word toil, for example, Paul uses this in another instance to refer to the toil of tent making. And tent making isn't like you're camping and you've got your Coleman tent and you've got all the poles and you spike them in the ground and your tent is up in a few minutes. Or in my case, it'd be up in a few hours because I'm you know, not tent-minded. But this isn't just setting up a tent. This is actually making the tent. And you're not making it out of plastic or vinyl or anything like that. It was made out of animal hides. It had to be stretched. It was laborious, tedious, arduous work, a demanding physical activity. And he says that being a minister is like that, sucking the energy right out of you if you're not careful, because in ministry, there's always something to do. There's never an end point. There's always another Sunday. You notice that? There's always someone in the hospital there's always someone in need. There's always a phone call from a colleague with a question that needs attention. And not only is there the usual rhythm of leadership in the church, but then there's COVID and the challenges that COVID presented. And recently the Wall Street Journal said nearly 40% of pastors in the United States have thought about resigning because of the extra pressure that COVID piled on. Yes, Paul says, leadership in the church is hard work. And pastors like to be reminded of how hard it is when uh, we get together and we have our pity parties. Oh, you wouldn't believe what I went through this month. Oh, yeah, and then it's just kind of this contest of, one upmanship or one up womanship, I guess, in as well. It's so hard. We kind of feel sorry for each other. No one really understands what we go through. But there's encouragement in what God says rather than what colleagues say about this toil and struggling. It's done with the energy that Powerfully works in me, Paul says. His energy. It's not Paul's energy. It's God's energy working in him. So does that mean, and what is the, the picture here of, of Paul being an apostle, that somehow he's like a spiritual Tesla. You know, he goes home at night and just kind of plugs in, and after eight hours, boom, you know, he's good to go because he's got all of this energy. Well, maybe not. A spiritual Tesla. 
I think what Paul is tapping into with this idea of energy is something that you discover in leadership. The more that you do in Christ, the more energy he gives for the God-given task. As you work for the Lord, he provides the energy. But first, you have to be like Mary. You have to sit at the feet of Jesus and receive from him first. Rather than being like Martha, just running around and doing stuff. And what is she doing? She's just getting more and more aggravated that her stupid sister is just sitting around. She's listening to Jesus. She's a slacker. She's always been a slacker. I've always known that about her. And boy, does that bug me. And how do we know that's the state of her heart? Because Jesus, being God, reveals the state of her heart. Where he says that you're anxious and troubled by many things. Because that's Martha. It isn't the work that's the problem. It's her mindset. It's her attitude. She hasn't met and been with Jesus. That's her issue. But Mary has done the one necessary thing. She's with Jesus. She wanted to hang out with Jesus and learn from him. That's the prerequisite. But once you have that aligned, your relationship with God, then it's time to do things, and God provides the energy to do so. His power is resurrection power. And Paul talks about this in chapter 2, verse 12 having been buried with Jesus in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. Resurrection power that comes by faith in Christ to do the work he's given us to do. To be merciful to the needy, to encourage, to teach, to help, to visit when you are tired. This is resurrection energy deployed by God's people in his church until Jesus returns. It's work of the church, the ministry of all people. Certainly there are different aspects of ministry to those who have leadership in the church. But all of us are given work, the work of ministry, to participate with the leaders in the building up of the body of Christ for his sake and for the world's sake. We've looked at the nature of ministry in the church. We looked at the fact that Jesus has to serve us before we can serve him and serve others. For leaders in the church, the nature of ministry is to present God's people to the Lord. For leaders, the nature of their ministries to make the word of God fully known, to proclaim Jesus, to reveal God's purpose that was previously hidden, to present people mature in Christ. And it's hard work. All ministry in the church is hard work. We all share in the work of ministry, playing our part in the body of Christ. But what we can't say in light of this passage in Colossians and the fact that we have the hope and the love of God, one thing we can't say is that we're not prepared. We're not able. But we are able to do the things that God has called us to do, and he gives us the energy to accomplish these things. The nature of our ministry is to teach, pray, serve, help, encourage, prepare, host, photocopy, water plants, paint, build things, That's the work of ministry for God's people in the church. We are redeemed people, equipped by the Lord, who have 
a new nature. A new nature for ministry given to us by God. To love, to serve, to do the ministry of the Lord here at Christ the King. For the sake of Christ and the universal church. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy word has tossed, taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, we beseech thee also so to lead the nations of the world into the way of righteousness and so to direct and dispose the hearts of all our leaders, especially Joe Biden, our president, and Michelle Lujan Grisham, our governor, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may truly and impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, and to the punishment of wicked, wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servants, Foley, our Archbishop, Stephen, our Bishop, Pete, our priest, and Bill, our deacon, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. For Christ the King, we pray for a curate, a priest in formation, to be identified and called for service. We pray for a youth leader and youth leadership team to restart our Sunday youth group. And we pray for additional teachers and helpers for King's kids. 
Lord, in thy mercy. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and strengthen us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy. We give thanks for our missionaries, especially LifeQuest USA, bringing Christ's message of a future and a hope to young people in New Mexico prisons. Meredith Omland, a missionary in Mexico with SAMS, the Society of Anglican Missionaries and Senders, and Young Life Albuquerque, a mission devoted to introducing adolescents to Jesus Christ and helping them grow in their faith. Guide them, O Lord, and give them boldness to serve you. Lord, in thy mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other, other adversity, especially Paula, Dee, Lena, Mickey, the, the family of Sophie Garvanian, and others we now name before thee. Lord, in thy mercy. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants who have departed this life in thy faith and fear, and thy will for them may be fulfilled. And we beseech thee to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling as able. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of the sins, to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 
And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning. Well, if you'd like to stick around for the 1030 service and afterwards we're having reception because we have a baptism at 1030 for Esther Mathis. We're looking forward uh, to that and getting ready uh, for that celebration. Bunch of announcements on pages 17 and 18 in our bulletins, uh, including uh, discovery class at 930 this morning and the fact that we're having a, a Wednesday potluck and discussion group at the church at 5.45 p.m. Also, as was pointed out in the prayers of the people, there was a, going to be a service for uh, Sophie Garvanian, uh, and that's going to be not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow at 11 o'clock here at Christ the King. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh. 
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and are bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the high. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the night in which he's betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of the dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same, and looking for his coming again in power and great glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, <clears throat> by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, Almighty, world without end, And now, as the Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body.
the post-communion prayer on page 14. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, God, we most heartily thank, thank thee for that thou dost thy safe to feed us, that we receive, receive the Holy Spirit, and the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And thus assure us thereby that thy favor and good towards us, and that we are very members of the corporate and the physical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is O Worship the King, verses 1 to through 3. 